Hey there, and welcome to The Knit Show. I'm Vicki Howell. Today we are bag obsessed. We are gonna be starting with my buddy Drew Emborski, who's going to be showing us how to make this really cute boho chic bag. Then we're taking a field trip to the Independence Farmstead Fiber Mill. That's gonna be super fun. You're gonna to get to see how yarn is made. From there, we are back in the studio with my other buddy, Kelly Deal, and she's gonna show us how to make this great knit and felted bag. But first, we are going to meet this episode's Knit Hive. Hello, ladies. Hi. Thank you, for, thank you for being here. So first up, Diane, my buddy Diane. We have done many a craft together. We started, I don't even know how we started, but we were doing needle crafts of all form, and then all of a sudden you decided like, quilting's dead to me, painting's <laughs> dead, to me. dead to me. I'm all <laughs> leather all the time now. You started your new company. Why, what, what is it about leather tooling that really sort of inspires you? Um, I am a second generation tooler. My grandpa was born on a covered wagon. Clearly this is my life's <laughs> destiny to like come back to who I always was. I took one class and fell hard and fast in love with it, found my way and I've just been trying to master things ever since. It's so, it's been really fun to watch this, like you grow into this too, Thank because you. I've I've seen you do everything, like literally everything. everything. <laughs> like pottery and photography and everything. And this is just like your passion. And so, and it's sort of a needle art. At I least brought, what you're doing I right brought, now. I brought my needle. This is this is still fiber. I mean, this is. And you're, <laughs> you, you actually are kind of sewing a bit. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm doing a buck stitch, which um, is a purposeful stitch. Um, you know, back in the Western days of keeping saddles together, but um, I love it. It was made very popular in the 1980s whenever Urban Cowboy came yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it's like, what makes my heart pitter patter but Urban Cowboys, yeah. clearly that's why I love it. So I brought my needle, I'm here for you, girl. I know you are, you <laughs> always are. And then Spike, I have not seen you. I was trying to remember, I think it's probably been a decade. At Lake at Austin a, At Spa. Lake Austin Spa, yeah. we both, um, we hosted a little kind of like not a knitting retreat, but just a session for the ladies that were there for Mother's Day weekend. And I think Debbie Stoller was there too, wasn't she? I don't remember, maybe. I think maybe. she was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. But anyways, it's so great to see you. Thanks. You You actually live on a farm now, right? Or at I, least a ranch. I do, I live on a small ranch uh, east of Austin. We're uh, very Texan today. Yeah. We're very Texan. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you here. And Susan, you and I have been friends for a while. We have a, a buddy in common, but we haven't really done a lot of crafting together. You took a class from me once. I did. And that's how I actually probably met you the first time. But I'm so happy to have you here actually knitting. It's so fun. What are you making? I'm making a pair of socks for my son. Um, I was knitting a blanket, and in being Texas, it's been really hard been to work miserable. on the blanket. Yeah, so, it's big enough that it covers me. So I put it aside and I've been knitting socks now. Yeah, Good so portable. here in, in Texas, it can be winter and still be 80, 90 degrees. You just never know what you're gonna get. So it's always great to have um, a portable project like this. And you actually have it in a really, really cute bag. I do. Um, it's one of the chicken boots bags. It is. So I love these bags. We're gonna talk, we're talking so much about bags today because I'm just absolutely, I love bags. Um, and one of the big trends right now I actually first saw them with this brand, Chicken Boots, is having a little see-through panel somewhere. Chicken Boots, in particular, makes all these different sizes for different for different projects. So that's great for a sock you're making. Have you seen all their other great bags? I have, and I'm going to have to get a few more for the rest of my projects. They're so good. They have all different sizes and fabrics. And then, I don't know if you saw this one. What I like about this one is that it's a needle case, which and you can see all of the needles because of the clear. But... Not only a needle case, it's also a Notions thing. You have to pass them around. It matches. Like, so. It does, oh, it does match, super cute. <laughs> yeah, super cute. There's a couple other brands that are doing kind of similar things, but in different shapes, um, and they do less of a, this has kind of like a, what do you call it, a foggy plastic um, versus a clear, clear. There's, this one is by Daisy Girl, has some really cute um, air streamers on them, which I love, and it's super sweet for either, maybe like a scarf like a medium-sized project for Pretty sure in your yarn. And then over here, this is by, would you mind handing that to me? Thank you, love. Okay. Um, this is by Darn Yarn. And what I really like about this, these in particular is that she pays attention to details like having contrasting 
zippers, which is really cute. And you can get matching for your notions or your smaller project, or if you were working on more than one project, which let's face it, we're all always <laughs> working on more than one project, you can put one within the other. Really cute and fun. And all of these are customizable because you can pick different fabrics um, and sizes and shapes. So super fun. This is, just, this is just a taste of some of the bag fun we're gonna have. Before we actually get to making bags though, I'm gonna leave you here. You knit, you do you. <laughs> and I'm gonna go over and meet our first guest, all right? My first guest today is my friend and designer from The Crochet Dude, Drew Amborski. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. You've really become known for your bags. I mean, you've always designed everything, but really lately there's bags really seem to be at the forefront of your, of your design processes. How did that happen? Well, it's interesting because I don't actually carry a bag but I really love to design them. I think there's something about the construction of them. It reminds me of when I was a kid and I played with Tinker Toys or Lincoln Logs where you could build stuff. It's the structure that intrigues me. So I'm always trying to get the shape. And you know, using crochet, it has a lot of structure, so uh, the foundation is there for it. But it's fun to try to get things to stand up or to be a certain shape. Yeah, I also love that you do not have to grade them. So they, <laughs> you don't have to write the patterns in a million different exactly. sizes. Exactly. Um, well, this is the one that we're gonna be making today. It's a mm -hmm. really cute kind of boho mm -hmm. chic bag. So it would be so pretty with just like a strappy dress and everything, I love it. Um, so why don't we go ahead and get started. We're gonna do, we're gonna really focus on the technique, the stitch patterns that will create this so that you can walk away with the skills that you need to make this bag. Absolutely. So according to the pattern, you're going to chain enough stitches for the bottom part right there, the foundation of it. And we're going to do the front and then do the back. So I've chained some of them, but a chain stitch, in case you don't remember, is you yarn over and pull through the loop. This is the basic motion of crochet, is you're always grabbing the yarn and pulling through that loop that's on the hook. And what you want to really make sure you do is see the shaft of the hook is up here is fatter than down here. Mm -hmm. You want to pull that stitch up because that's the size of the stitch based on the size of the hook. If you keep your stitches down here, they're going to be too it's tight. Be just tight, right? So according to the pattern, we're going to skip seven stitches. So we're going to count seven chain from the hook, but don't count that loop. That's also a tricky thing to remember. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in that seventh chain, we're going to yarn over and make a double crochet. You insert the hook, you pull up a loop, so you have three on your hook, yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. That's the double crochet. So if you see in the pattern, there are columns of these shell stitches. And to make a shell stitch, you wanna put two double crochets in the same space. You wanna chain two, and then you're going to make two more of those double crochets in the next chain. There's one, there's two. So now you can see I've made a shell stitch there and there's a space in between these double crochets. So we're not gonna chain anymore. We're gonna skip two stitches and then make two double crochets right in a row. So there's one there and there's one there. And what this will be is that'll be that column of post stitches that are right here in between the shells. So then we'll make one more shell, which is two double crochet, yarn over, insert the hook, pull up a loop, Yarn over and pull through two. This yarn is really amazing. This is organic cotton yarn that's been dyed with, without chemicals. And so it's really easy on the skin if you're wearing a project with it. And it's got thick and thin aspects to it. So Which it gives, you don't find a lot in a cotton. This is by yeah. our friend Kristen Omdahl, right? right? Who's also been in the studio this exactly. season. And so you can see that it's uh, made some interesting texture as you go, which is great for that boho look. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna skip the last two stitches and we're gonna end this row with the double crochet. And what you'll see is that you have this space right in the middle, which will make those columns and two shells on either side. So what I wanna show you is the next row so that you can see how to do post stitches because that can be tricky too. So when you make your shell in the next row, you're going to go right in that chain two space. And, and he's two. working on a swatch size, just not to confuse you at home. Your piece will be wider. Like Absolutely. This unless you want a really tiny purse. That's okay too. Honestly, my daughter asked me for accessories <laughs> for her beanie boos all the time, so I might want a that really tiny be, purse. That'd be perfect. So I've made that in the first shell, which is that first shell there. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to make what are called post stitches. Yep. And post stitches are fun. It's a double crochet, but you're not going to go underneath those two loops like normal. You're going to go around the post of the stitch. 
So when I first start post stitches, I like to pull them apart and find that space on either side. Yarn over for a double crochet, go underneath through that first loop, out the other hole, then grab the yarn and finish the double crochet. So I'll show it again. I'll pull it apart. There's that one from the previous row. Yarn over, go in that hole, go under it, and come out the other hole. And that's a front post double crochet. And what's great about those is they give a lot of texture. They pop out of the fabric. So they, you know, they, they go real high. So according to the pattern, you're just gonna go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And what you'll do is you end up with um, columns of shells and post stitches. Mm -hmm. But in order to get this boho shape, which is kind of fatter at the bottom, you need to reduce the number of stitches in the row. So what I did here, if you look closely, is I just crocheted two of them together. Mm -hmm. So I came across like normal, and I did one post stitch that went around both those stitches. It's super easy. Anytime you want to decrease in crochet, you just do less stitches than the row before. And you can do that by smushing them together. Okay. So you just can continue right up the purse, right up to the end. And then what you're going to want to do is do the other side of the purse. And to do that, you flip the, the front part over. Here's your original foundation. So what you'll want to do is crochet directly into that original foundation. Oh, so foundation. instead of seaming it later, right. you're working it as one piece. The thing about purses is they need to be durable. If you oh. put stuff in it, oh, it's going to fall out. If you know, Using a seam, is you're taking the chance the seam will right. come out. All it has to do is that one piece of thread to break, and the whole sure. thing would unseam. Plus, who likes finishing, really, if we're being honest? Come on. Let's just avoid it. So you're going to work right in that bottom foundation. So I just started with a double crochet right there. And see, there's that shell from the previous mm -hmm. row. So I'll just make that shell right in the seam. I'll just make two stitches, and we'll look at it. So there are two stitches. So you can see I'm just going right across the bottom and corresponding the stitches right to the previous. So it'll mirror what the exactly. what the other side did. That's great. That's exactly. great. And so the next thing that we need to focus on is the flap of the bag. Yes, exactly. We are. This is actually real size, right? We're no longer this is working real size. size yeah. just to I worked this up to make sure that we had something to look at because there's things going on here. Essentially, you're working the same as uh, the purse itself. So. Um, but what you're doing is you're going back and forth in this half circle. So okay. according to the pattern, what you'll do is you do all these double crochets, and then it's the same post stitches and the same shells coming on out. And you just make this. And then what you end up doing is you end up just stitching it right to the back of the purse, and now you have a flap that corresponds. Okay, perfect. And then you've added a little extra razzle-dazzle to it. Yes, right? I, well, these uh, tassels really, I think, uh, help pull off that boho look. Absolutely, you, know, you easy, have to have look. fringe for that. But then you also added some beads. I did the beads because this um, organic cotton especially, if you were to leave that just raw, it will un it'll ravel. And that's great if that's the look you want, but if you don't want that look, you'll need to put some fray check or tie a knot or add a really cool bead. Yeah, really nice. And then you've also lined it. I'm just gonna give yes. a, little, a little shot. Yeah, I, There's it's a little really peekaboo sound. Yeah, it's really important. I have a, a a tutorial on lining bags because I do so many of them. It's really important that you line a crochet bag unless yep. the fabric's super tight. Well, we'll, if we'll it's definitely. it's loose at all. If it's loose at all, yeah, then you're gonna, lose, you're gonna lose stuff. All right, well, this is gonna be so fun to make and wear. I want them in all different kinds of colors. Thank you so much. And we are gonna actually put the link to your tutorial for lining on our episode show notes page. And of course, you'll be able to download the pattern at thenitshow.com. Up next, we are headed over to Brenham, Texas to the Independence Farmstead Fiber Mill. I'm here at the Independence Farmstead Fiber Mill with the boss lady herself, Dawn Brown. Thank you so much for having me here. This is gorgeous and I would, I'd love to know how a former physician <laughs> decides to leave it all by a 1960s building and turn it into a gorgeous fiber mill. Our family history uh, starts uh, way back in Lampasas uh, in the 1880s. Uh, we had family that uh, raised fine wool sheep. My eldest female relative was uh, Elizabeth Tumlinson, uh, and she was one of the first women to receive a land grant in Austin's Colony uh, near Columbus, Texas. Looking into all of that history um, and, and the fine wool ranching, I was like, you know, maybe there's something that, that this 
is meant to be. That you come from a long line of pioneer yes, women, it yes. sounds like. My fiber journey started uh, after an injury I sustained. And it was my form of physical therapy. As you know, yarn is very a healing craft. I had to leave private practice and I, uh, I moved into the nonprofit medicine up in Northeast Arkansas. And we bought a little farm and came the goats. About that time, I had a job offer back in Texas, and uh, we decided that you know we would just take the equipment and find a place for it here. And we were very fortunate in our search that we found a farm, a true farmstead, uh, with all of the outbuildings we needed, including one for the mill. With my family history and the history of this place, it just seemed like that should be the focus of the mill, that we should work with the wool and mohair that's produced here in Texas. And uh, Texas still produces the most mohair in our country. And if you buy mohair products uh, across the globe, uh, there's a good chance that there's some Texas mohair uh, in there. I would love to see how the entire process from beginning to end works. Would you mind taking me sure, and showing me? Sure, yeah. We'll take a look. All right. The cleaning process for us starts with skirting. We go through there by hand and, and basically pull off and skirt off uh, the edges of the fleece that are undesirable. Either they're stained or they have a lot of grass burr or clover burr in them. After we skirt, uh, we typically will bag and tag all the fleeces. They go to the washing system. Then what's next? Uh, we typically lay them out on drying racks and we'll, we usually will dry in an afternoon. Now they're dry, what's next? Uh, we take them to the picker and it will tumble that fleece and open up all of the locks. For fine wool and mohair, I like to send all of my fleeces through uh, the fiber separator. It's like pre-carding. Carding, Carding uh, is a series of drums, again, with different uh, length of teeth on them. And as the fiber goes through the drum carter and allows all the fibers to become even more aligned. So what comes out the back of the carter, is just a sheet uh, of fiber that you can condense and make into roving. And those cans of roving, some become uh, drafted or drawn on the draw frame where we do a little bit of extra blending and a little bit of extra uh, refining. Okay, so once they go through the draw frame, then you spin and... Right, so the singles are all spun uh, and then they're typically spun in one direction, we apply in the other direction. You want a balanced yarn uh, with very fine crimpy wool. It's um, That's our big challenge is to get a very balanced yarn, the, the, the fiber has a lot of energy to it with all of that crimp. After applying, we'll cone them and put them through the steamer, and then we will skein them off on the skein winder. Uh, and depending on if it's an indie dyer or someone that wants to dye their yarns, we will put them in a larger three-foot type skein. All right, so this is what, when people come and they take their tour and they want to leave with a little bit of your goodness, this is what it will look like, correct? This is some of our yarns that we make here. Along with doing processing for other farms and ranches, we do make um, our own yarns and they are 100% from Texas uh, wool and mohair. Uh, they're naked wools. Uh, a lot of them are going to be undyed. We do dye a few yarns as well. I try to use natural dyes if possible. It just kind of goes with the yarn. It has a a strong sense of place and um, you know we try to impart that uh, with uh, with the dyeing as well. So this has been yeah. an amazing experience. Thanks for coming. I am so thrilled I'd actually never seen yarn made before in yes. this manner. We made some yarn today. We made yes. some yarn. Thank you You'll so much. Pleasure. Home. You're welcome. Thank you. We are back here in the studio, and my next guest is my friend, musician from both the Breeders and our ring, Kelly Deal. Thank you so much for being here. That's my pleasure, Vicki. Thanks for having me. I would love if you would share your story that you've told me before about how you actually got started knitting. I was on tour in Amsterdam, and um, all my band members, all my bandmates went out, and they were drinking, and they went to the red light district. And I was really clean then, or still am. So I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to go, I didn't want to go out drinking. I was super bored. And this was back in like in the 90s when there were two television stations and no internet. So um, I was like, I have to do something with my hands. I gotta do something. And I noticed that I was talking to the, the drummer of the band 
his girlfriend mm -hmm. of the band we were out with, um, a band called the Radar Brothers, actually. And so um, she taught me to knit while we were on tour. And ever since then, I, I just, I got addicted to it. And just, yeah. Um, it, it, I started knitting so much and talking about it. I was on Nitty Gritty you were. on that show. Yeah. And, um, and then you wrote a book, a bag book. I, yes, a yep. bag book. And I, it got to be kind of a, a thing that I would uh, do knitting, you know, workshops or something like that. Sometimes, especially in Europe, because yeah. they're big knitters over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're in Australia as well. And um, whenever we would play a concert, I remember one time I'm, we're up there and we're playing, and I was like, what? I was, my first thought was, is somebody throwing rolls of toilet paper at me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. These soft things were bouncing off my head. I was like, what is Oh, they were hitting on? you? They were hitting me. Yeah. And I was like, what is that? And I followed it across the stage. I was like, oh my God, it's yarn. They were People were throwing bags of yarn at me. So it was really great. Or balls of yarn at yeah, me. It was really yeah. fun. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Why, yeah. why bags? You really have focused on designing bags and have for years. What, yeah. what draws you to bags in particular? Portable. Yeah. They're portable, uh, discreet. They have a beginning and an end. I do a lot of traveling. Mm -hmm. uh, they're easy to take on a plane. Um, they don't require a gauge or any kind of measurement. Sure. So I can give them as gifts. Mm -hmm. So they're the perfect project. And you really do a lot of felting, and that's what we're going to be doing today. This is kind of your signature bag. You have it in a, you carry it yourself. Yes, all the time. Yep. yeah, for years. And we're going to be making that. So we'll walk you through a little bit. We'll walk you through some of the knitting. We're going to talk hardware. We're also going to talk felting. But first, what if I got started? Uh, yeah. Okay, let's, let's do trade that. places. Perfect. All right. Okay, so let's start the knitting. Okay. So the first thing that you will do is use double pointed needles and you want to cast on six stitches and then you want to knit one row. I've already done that already. So this particular bag requires a heavy increase, meaning that we're going to go from teeny tiny to, to big right away. And you know what? I'm going to pull in this just for a second. Uh -huh. We're starting from the base, from the bottom out, so just to give you a reference. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna knit in front and back. And if I'm not doing you right, you just let me know. Uh -huh. Let me tell you why this is such a good project for beginning yep. uh, beginning DPN users, double-pointed needle users. Hold on one users. second. Then you're gonna knit one, right? Knit front and back and then knit one. No, knit. not yet. It's a knit front and back, knit front and back on the all whole of them, row. All the way around. So, yeah. every, so you're doubling the stitches on the yes. first row. Keep going. Take um, it. It's a great, uh, because it's like, you know when you're like a kid and they give you the big, huge pencil to yeah, start yeah, your writing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that. With these, it's a great project to, to first, but it looks so awkward. That's why I'm having her do this. I know, this. I know, it's funny. And this happens all the time where you lose your, yeah. your DPNs when you're only working on six, which will now be 12 stitches. But exactly. you know what? Because this is big, chunky yarn, mm -hmm. it's really, really easy just to slide them back in. So yeah. don't get frustrated. Don't. And just keep going. It's okay, so you're going to do this. And it's very forgiving because it is a felted project. Right. Just do your best. Yeah, exactly. You don't actually, it doesn't matter if you forget one or whatever. Yeah. So you're going to do that same increase all the way around. And then following the pattern, you'll continue to increase at a different ratio? Uh, yes. As you get bigger. Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to finish this needle because why not? We're here. <laughs> <laughs> and I like to knit. Why not? Okay, so. We're gonna do this increase, and then you're gonna work as the pattern calls for until it's time to transfer to your circular needle. Yeah. Take it from there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we've got here, what I've added, so as you can see, we just continue going around. Look what I've added here. This is a great little trick here. It's just one of these little pins with a row counter. Stitch holder. Uh -huh. A stitch holder, <laughs> thank you, and a row counter, which is very important because I have a smushy brain and uh, it, it really helps me keep track of the increases and decreases that are needed on the bag. So, and then also add your- um, Stitch marker. Stitch marker, mm -hmm. thank you, because smushy brain. Yep. I okay. mean, okay. I support you. <laughs> I'm not agreeing with yeah. this machine right now. Okay, so now we've done our increases. We're going to continue doing some increases, mm -hmm. but it's time to move to a different needle. Let's, Let's do that. And we're going to do a little, a short little circular. Sure. Look how short. It's awesome. Now, these, does it matter what length? I guess it does because you're on this small piece. So you yeah. want to. So I believe that these are 16 inch. They are. Okay, perfect. And it, we're just knitting onto yeah. this. 
And you're working just on um, clover takumi bamboo needles, which are really great for this type of wool. And you're just gonna transfer. I'm gonna have you finish just one needle and then they'll get the, they'll get the idea. Okay. I think, yeah, yeah. Because I really want to make sure that we get in talking hardware and felting and all that good stuff. Right. So as you go around, once you get to the end of a needle, you just ditch it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And then you would continue all the way around until that needle was fully loaded. Exactly. Right? Okay, let's talk next. So let's, you can move that over there. Okay. I'm going to put it right over here. Oh, you're leaving. Okay. <laughs> Why not? We need the real estate. Okay, fine. Okay, uh, next. So you're going to continue as the pattern calls for. You'll notice, you'll notice there are some decreases for shape. Yes. So we've done, this is uh, the stitch counter and mm -hmm. the needle holder thingy. And we've done that whole thing. We've increased, increased. And now we do a decrease mm -hmm. for shape, as you can see. Yep. Then we, we start to shape the front opening. Okay. That's when you do uh, this right here. You start shaping the front opening. Sure. And all of this will be in the pattern, which yeah. is available on our website. Yeah. But what I would love it for them to see is how to pick up the stitches for the tabs on the side. Okay. One thing, another thing that's really great about yeah. this is you can see why it's, it's, it's all one piece. The whole thing. And this is the Flat, uh, flat. Right. It's all one so piece. So you're you're working in the round until you get to that point, and then you work back and yes. forth for the flap. And okay. you bind off. You drop some of those, and you bind those off, and it's really easy. Now, we've got uh, straps. Yeah. Um, we have strap tabs. What I've done here is I've just picked up six six stitches, and I've in garter stick mm -hmm. stitch gone back and forth for twelve rows, and at that point, I've slipped on some. Uh, a ring that I got off of a uh, an old ugly bag in a thrift store, yeah, yeah. and I've just stolen the rings. And then I'll just uh, sew that down. Okay. Same with the other side. But you had a tip for using a crochet hook for picking up stitches, right? Yeah, picking up stitches on these uh, on the little uh, DPNs mm -hmm. or on the really big um, needles is kind of hard. So okay. I really like using a crochet needle. This is not a big crochet needle. It doesn't matter what size it is. It doesn't matter? Okay. No. Here, this so, one yarn. Yeah. And uh, it's only six, so there's yeah. one. Yeah, well, you can just use these. We have these on hand. Two. Three. That's super easy. It is. And just do it loosely. Four, five, and six, knowing that you're going to go and transfer those to this guy, and you're just gonna go, and it just makes things easier. Yeah, that's a great tip. Okay, so from there you would work the tab, as she has just explained. Yeah. I would love it now if we could move over and chat a little bit about handles. Okay. You use all kinds of different handles. You actually gave me a purse where you used an old telephone cord as a handle, oh, yeah, remember that? Right. Yep, I still have that, I love it. Yeah. But you like to, uh, repurpose old bags and yeah. come up with new. This looks like it might have been from jeans or Yeah, that? this is an inseam, inseam of a jean. This is a, like I a can't washer? tell you what that is. That's something <laughs> hardware-y. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> yeah, so just, a ring, so just be creative. You can use anything that can be turned into a strap. Yes. Or a string. And this can is be just used. a knot. Okay. And you would just do it on the other side. Um, here's an example of that. Yep. Sewn on. And yeah. you're doing all of this, you, you attach the handle and the hardware before you felt. I do, but there's a little trick here. Okay. Look at this guy. See what I did right there? Yeah. It's one of those. It's a key ring. Oh, okay. So if you don't have one or if you've done the bag and you're like, uh, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. you can just get a key ring. A big old key ring. So you can and do, do it that. later. So all is not yes. lost if you if exactly. You okay. Lots of options. Last up, let's talk felting. So yes. this swatch. This. Here, I'll take them. Yeah. This swatch is what it's knitted up. This is the felted swatch. Yeah. As you can see, the these the, this bag is huge. Uh, it, it, it's really really big. And um, you know what I did? I, I knit up this swatch and then I washed it. One. Uh, two. 
three times. In the machine? I did machine wash. I, I knit up two of them. I put this in the machine three times. Mm -hmm. Normal wash, small load uh, with dishwashing soap mm -hmm. and like a towel and a pair of jeans. Sure, and you wanna make sure that you put it in a either a zippered pillowcase or a lingerie bag yeah. um, or something to protect it. Yes, and uh, yeah, and so you you can see how much it... I think the unofficial rule is that it shrinks about 30%, but right. it's not an exact science. Sometimes different colors can felt at different rates. That's you just, right. You just don't know. So it's, if it thing, matters to you what size it is, you should swatch, but yes. it doesn't matter no, what the it bag like this. The important thing is to make sure that most of that stitch definition is gone. That makes the difference. Absolutely. For me. And so you just keep going. And yeah. it is so durable. <gasps> it's you don't great. even have to line it. No, and I've 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 re-blocked it. I've re-washed it. Like uh you can take uh the straps off uh and uh you can just wash it again just to uh, make it come back to life. And then you usually use just plastic grocery bags or whatever just to stuff it in when yeah, you're blocking exactly. it and let it dry. Just grocery bags and stuff. Perfect. Yeah. Well, I love it. You know, I'm, I dig this bag. You know, I'm a huge fan of you, my friend. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. So next up, we're going to keep talking bags with a tip for cool handles. <laughs> Sometimes finding handles for a really cool crocheted bag like this can be kind of hard. You go to craft stores and they've got your basics, you know, they've got chain and usually some kind of bamboo number. You can also pillage straps from your old purses. But honestly, sometimes you just need something special, different and unexpected. So that's when you can go over to your crafty supplies and find some needles, like these big mamma jammas. These are birch and they're just kind of basic needles, but they're also super sturdy, which makes a great handle. So as long as the bag that you make has tabs in it that are big enough to fit through, you can slide your needles in. Grab your bag and go. All right, that does it for us today. Thanks for hanging out, watching, and chatting bags with us. Knit Hive ladies, thank you so much for being here with me. I loved hanging out with you. Remember, for any of the patterns and link information from the show, just go to theknitshow.com. And if you make any of the bags that you saw today, please tag at Vicki Howell or at The Knit Show. We'd love to see what you're working on. Stay tuned for our next episode where we focus on lace. We'll have owner of Mode Knit Yarns, Annie Modisette, and also designer Kristen Omdahl. Until then, take a little time to be creative, breathe in, knit out. <laughs> <laughs>